Hi, I'm W2P film critic Jason Fraley, and all month long, we're ranking the best movies in every single genre. That's 30 genres over 30 days, and today, we just happen to be talking about the best family comedies. Now, you'll notice a lot of common threads appearing throughout this list of family comedies, um, but one of the, my favorite ones was, it's sort of this subgenre of meeting the parents, meeting the in-laws, you know, that dreaded moment where you have to go meet um, either your girlfriend or your boyfriend's uh, parents that you want them to be your future in-laws, but hilarity ensues. So, of course, we get movies like Meet the Parents. Um, I love this movie. It's one of my favorites. Um, you know, Ben Stiller as Greg Fokker. Um, laughing already at the name. And, of course, Meet the Fockers was the follow-up. Um, but the reason Meet the Fockers did so well as a sequel, one of the top-grossing top sequels ever, is be on the strength of how much everyone loved the first one. Poor Greg can't uh, catch a break here. And the whole time, he's just getting interrogated by... I mean, imagine having Robert De Niro as your father-in-law, or wannabe father-in-law, especially when he's a former CIA agent, you know, bugging your room and all that. You have Jinxie Cat with the, lacking the imposable thumbs flushing the toilet. Um, you know, the, the gazebo catches on fire and they lose his luggage. I mean, it, some people I've talked to say, I, yeah, I can't like it because I feel so bad for him, but I am crying, especially when, you know, it's, I have nipples, Greg, can you milk me? And then he, he shoots the thing and the urn falls off and Jinxie pees in the ashes of De Niro's mind. It is, to me, I mean, Jay Roach, it's, I mean, he did Austin Powers, but... I, I love Meet the Parents. Um, you get ones that are, I mean, guess who's coming to dinner? Do you, I had toy, dude, is that family comedy, family drama? Of course there's so many dramatic moments with interracial marriage. It's kind of like Meet the, it is a Meet the Parents, but with Sidney Poitier dealing with some heavy themes and uh, Spencer Tracy and Catherine Hepburn. But in the end, I ultimately could have gone either way. Um, I, I slipped it in here because the, the tone of it from the start and the end, it's that you got to give a little, take a little. That's the story of love. It's just like bouncy, light. Um, um, you know, more of a, I guess it's more of a uh, family comedy, but you could have easily just put it in drama. Either way, go see it. Um, and then we get movies like Moonstruck, which, yes, has the snap out of it romance with Cher and Nicolas Cage, but there's a lot of Cher's the, uh, family, you know, bickering and stuff um, in New York. That, so I slipped it in here. And then, of course, movies like The Birdcage, <laughs> where, um, you know, you have Nathan Lane and Robin Williams with Fussy, 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 you know, Madonna, Madonna. I think it goes in here with sort of the, the meeting the in law kind of a deal. Now, in addition to those hilarious, you know, meeting the parents type movies, um, we also did, I noticed there was a lot of, I guess, more quirky, where it's not just the parents, but it's just the whole family unit itself. So when you bring the kids in, a lot of the dysfunctional family uh, quirkiness that happens here. Um, so you get movies, they're kind of dramedies, but I would say like the Royal Tenenbaums, I think is more of a comedy. Yes, it has some dramatic moments like Needle in the Hay, like the, the Luke Wilson scene. But um, but yeah, like Gwyneth Paltrow and Ben Stiller, um, Angelic Houston, Danny Glover, I mean, look at Bill Murray. Um, but of course, the, the family patriarch, uh, Royal Tenenbaum, um, played by Gene Hackman who um, I guess he pretends he's dying of cancer just so he can bond with the family. It's Wes Anderson, so it's, of course, that dramedy, uh, quirky style. Um, it's definitely, I mean, I personally am not as big of a Wes Anderson fan as a lot of people, but this is my favorite one. Um, he does a lot of, um, what I admire about him is is the, the camera, ne it's never like a fluid, like you think with uh, like a steady cam. It never moves um, fluid through space. It's locked off almost like on an XY axis. Um, so... But and so you get a lot of cool tilts and pans, and of course the staging of of the the Tenenbaum house, and well, all of his movies really. I, I don't think anyone's kind of done done sort of that proscenium view, perfect, almost like a dollhouse. Uh, since maybe Kubrick, um, better than Wes Anderson. So that gets on here. We also get movies like Juno, you know, how the family deals with that. And you forget that you have J.K. Simmons and Allison Janney, two future Oscar winners, as her parents, not to mention all the other great actors in that movie. Um, we, I put the descendants in here. Uh, George Clooney um, bonding with his daughters while his wife's in a coma and he finds out she has, um, uh, she, she had an affair. Again, very dramatic moments, but I, it's sort of that Alexander Payne, uh, Wes Anderson style uh, quirky thing. Uh, so Payne's movie gets in here. Um, Noah Baumbach, of course, has to be in here. Um, he's done a lot from Mistress America to Francis Ha, but for me, for this, I put in The Squid and the Whale, which was his big breakthrough. A really young Jesse Eisenberg um, dealing with the divorce of his parents, uh, Laura Linney um, and, um, and Jeff Daniels. Uh, so that gets in here. Uh, Baumbach uh, really um, helped uh, launch Greta Gerwig, so we had to get Baumbach on here. 
here. Um, and then uh, Captain Fantastic, a movie that I don't think many people saw from, I guess, 2016. Uh, Viggo Mortensen uh, living off the grid with his family um, out in the woods, um, trying to teach them to live differently than mainstream society. I promise you, I popped it in there. And my parents, who you know, more mainstream viewers, we were crying. It is hysterical. Watch it. Watch Captain Fantastic. But speaking of mainstream movies, I, I listed a lot of those sort of indie, uh, I guess, dark comedy, you know, um, bittersweet, or I guess quirky kind of indies like Baumbach. But I also have some mainstream ones in here. Home Alone, uh, one of my most magical, influential <laughs> movies as a child, directed by Chris Columbus, um, with a script from John Hughes. Um, a lot of people forget that, you know, he, was, he sort of wrote a bit of a trilogy because he did Planes, Trains, Automobiles, and then uh, Christmas Vacation, and then Home Alone. It's sort of his little Christmas trilogy, so that's how I always view it. Giant candy and two of them. Um, but Macaulay Culkin, slap in the cheeks, that's the pop culture thing. But come on, Joe Pesci, Daniel Stern, it might look silly in hindsight because we've seen it so many times. Like, okay, yeah, they're gonna, the wet bandits are going to fall for that many booby traps. But I promise, when it came out, people were falling in the aisles. No one had ever seen those booby traps. So many people have spoofed it, Three Ninjas, and there's so many booby trap kids booby tracking. The, but back then, it was fresh. It was new. Um, yeah, it's hard to put it above some of the quote-unquote great movies of all time but I have it in the middle of this list because I love it um, so much so for a personal reason we went in to see it in 1990 I was six so I was perfect for the Macaulay Culkin age we went in and it wasn't snowing we came out of the movie theater and it was snowing it's so magical brother and I went home and made boy by himself so that's my personal pick yeah I know original title boy by himself um, okay but then we also get Mrs. Doubtfire Robin Williams I mean we mentioned him in the birdcage but here it's dealing with divorce. In a way, if you think about it, it kind of combines two Dustin Hoffman movies. It takes the divorce elements of Kramer vs. Kramer uh, with the cross-dressing elements of Tootsie, puts them together for one of my favorite comedies of all time. Uh, Robin Williams is hysterical as Mrs. Doubtfire. Um, you know, help is on the way and hello. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's hilarious. Mrs. Doubtfire, him dancing to Dude Looks Like a, a Lady with the vacuum cleaner, uh, Sally Field, Pierce Brosnan, um, all the cute little kids, Matilda. Um, it's just, it's just great. Um, and then of course, uh, one that I debated putting in drama, but ultimately I put it here because I laugh and smile when I think of it, Rain Man. Dustin Hoffman as Rain Man, yes, it could have easily been a drama. We're not kidding anybody. And it won Best Picture probably because of his dramatic elements. Barry Levinson, 1988. Um, but it's a family. It's definitely a family movie because it's about the brothers. Um, it's about Tom Cruise, who's a selfish prick throughout the movie. Um, and he, that whole their whole road trip to Vegas, where we're counting cards, counting cards. Um, they uh, he bonds with Raymond and, and learns that you know who, who he once with, he thought it was going to be a nuisance having to watch over him. Um, that Dustin. Hoffman iconic role um, he actually grows to love him and you know hot water burn baby and there's all those especially when they're singing in the mirror they're singing what is it um, I saw her standing there and the, uh, the Beatles song there's there's those touching dramatic moments but to me I mean Dustin Hoffman um, when he I just smile it's got comedic elements when he has to watch Judge Wapner he only flies Qantas because it's the only one that hasn't crashed he counts the toothpicks definitely definitely um, I, I got a date with Irish she's very sparkly like a holiday I'm a very good driver I mean it's teaching him to dance there's it's it could go either way I slipped it into the family comedy could be family drama but point being I love Rain Man now, of all the great family comedies, how do you choose a top three? Well, the, I went with the three that first come to mind when I think of this genre. Number three, Little Miss Sunshine. I thought this movie, it just charmed the pants off of me. The actors, in, I mean, Alan Arkin, um, Tony Collette, um, Greg Kinnear, a young Paul Dano taking a vow of silence, Steve Carell showing a dramatic side, um, and of course young Abigail Breslin who's trying to, 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 who leads the family all the way across country to do a beauty pageant where she does a hilarious dance that's different than what they're expecting. But... I just think it's the ult one of those ultimate family road trip movies, a dysfunctional family, of course. But there's so many moments I'm cracking up, um, especially um, to me, it's all about their their little their vehicle. Um, is it a van or a, a VW? I can't remember. It's, I think it's like a yellow van, as the, and they have to get the first of all the horn is broken, so it's going me 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 me. The horn. <laughs> See, I'm smiling now, but they have to get out and push it to start it every time. It is hilarious. I think that it is uh, the 21st century because it came out in the early 2000s. Uh, 21st century's answer to the number two movie on my list, National Lampoon's Vacation.
come on, you think family comedies. You think the Griswolds. You think Chevy Chase as the ultimate dad. Try He's trying so hard, but he just keeps mucking things up. I mean, I think uh, Tim Allen's Tim Taylor in Home Improvement got a lot um, um, from from uh, Chevy Chase's dad here. You know, they, they're trying so hard, but they just keep messing up. Um, they're, of course, the iconic uh, station wagon, the green one with the little um, brown wood trim. Um, just so many, I mean, stopping and seeing um, Randy Quaid, who, who I think is even funnier in the Christmas Vacation sequel, you know, <laughs> when he says, I got a metal plate put in my head, and yeah, it's fine, but every time the wife turns on the microwave, I pee myself and forget who I am for half. Come on, it's so funny. Um, so, yes, Vacation, but Vacation was the one that first did it. You had Anthony Michael Hall as, as the son, although the son seems to change with every sequel. I still don't understand. And the daughter. I don't know why. Juliette Lewis was the, in the second one. It's so, I don't know why they keep changing it. Um, Beverly D'Angelo as the wife. Hilarious. And of course, when they get to Wally World, uh, John Candy's there as the cop or the security guard that gets held hostage because they get all the way there. They do that Chariots of Fire run to that theme and then Wally World is closed. And you think, oh my God, we've gone the whole way across the country and it's closed. Um, it's just hilarious. But still my favorite scene is the dog on the leash. Um, the, the cop comes up and says, you can scrape the rest of the carcass uh, off the highway. Ugh, feel bad for the dog, but it's hilarious. That scene, I'm crying. My brother and I, favorite scene. But number one, um, family comedy of all time, A Christmas Story. I love A Christmas Story. It is so good. Gene Shepard um, script, um, Bob Clark directing it. Um, but it's just so iconic. I know it's probably it's way too bizarre and maybe even dark and weird for a lot of people. Um, but I think it's, I'd say, if it's safe to say, I mean, even my family thought it was weird the first time we watched it. Um, but now it's one of our favorites. I mean, it's 24, it airs 24 seven on, on Christmas. Um, and and uh, it's just, it's just, come on, how can you, there's so many classic moments. You have, you know, Ralphie wanting his Red Ryder BB gun, but they keep saying, you'll shoot your eye out. Um, there's the, the Ralphie's brother who is, you know, uh, doesn't want to eat his food, so he has to eat it like, how do the piggies eat? Or or he, he's, he's bundled up so much in the snow and he's like, I can't get up, <laughs> I can't put my arms down. Um, you have you have the kids getting his tongue stuck on the pole. You have Ralphie spilling the lug nuts with his dad uh, trying to change a flat tire, and he says fudge. Only he didn't say fudge. And of course, the iconic leg lamp. You know, the glow of electric sex in the window. Um, I love the mom. I love the dad. And uh, to me, it's just some of the. It's the voiceover narration that influenced a lot of other stuff that I guess was on our coming of age list, um, like Stand by Me, um, and then The Sandlot, which you'll see in sports. But to me, or even the Wonder Years on TV, all those nostalgic old school voiceover um, looking back. But A Christmas Story did it first in 1983, and some of those just great lines that you don't you don't even notice the first time you see it. But the stuff like in the heat of battle, my old man could weave a, a, a string of of, of of obscenity that, as far as we know, is still hanging in space over Lake Michigan. Like, what? Where do you come up with this stuff? I love A Christmas Story. It puts me in a good mood all the time. Um, I think it's the best family comedy of all time and since we don't have a Christmas list here um, it's tops on this one best family comedy ever see my full top 25 family comedies on WTOP.com's entertainment page join us tomorrow when we break down the best family dramas